So, so an alternative requires a new money. So, so and and there is no fix from the existing system. Yes. Right. So, what type of system would be hard enough? Would be would be so violent against that system that would get harder and harder and harder. That could be outside of that system and control and and take away from all of the control functions and all of the vested interests of that system, and and not allow any human. To to uh, to to change it. You're talking about Dentacoin, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so 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 that's that's actually why. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, yeah. So so that's why that's why I I wanted to put the blockchain trilemma up. Okay. And yeah. I, I wanted to walk through through that. So when you understand that decentralized and sec, uh, security in a market that people are, if you look back at the information, people are just trying to get. Out of that system, they yes. know the system's bad. They're trying to make enough money for their own families to be able to get out of that system, to retire, to save enough money to. And that system is making them worse and worse, and it's creating more misinformation. And they are looking through that misinformation, and now you've had you have this Bitcoin, which is the first time in history that you didn't have to trust an institution, right? Removes because the theft. It removes the theft. The decentralization and secure. So if it was true that it was decentralized and secure forever, then it's the first time in history that you didn't have to trust an institution which could get co-opted by money hmm. to be able to, for, for trust. You could trust code. First time in history. Big, big deal. If that was true. That's, so when I went down to the sand, I wanted to test, is that true? And and I explained deeper on why that's true, and 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 out of that you would have from the system you would have, you could predict what market forces would do. That system, because it's open source code and it was decentralized and secure, would create a whole bunch of competition, right? Because it it monetized from zero to up to sixty thousand and 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 back down to sixteen today, but but it monetized from zero to creating a lot of wealth for a lot of people that were early on the system. And those and and those and those and so what they would naturally do in a system that was people were trying to escape escape a system that was causing pain and something was growing so fast and creating untold wealth for people, it would create a, a, a whole bunch of copycats to try to create the same thing. It would create a whole bunch of noise to be able to do that. And so let's just go through what that noise would look like. First, if if I could just cut over this t- same open source coin and create new coin, Dogecoin, on 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 the same just fork it and create a new one, then if I could do that, then then I could. T- Say to a lot of people, well, these people made a bunch of money on this. I can make more money. Now let's ask, now let's ask the next question. A copy of the original uh, original design would have the exact same utility of the r- original design with less decentralization and security. It must. Hmm. Right? So it's a shorter chain. It must have less compute power protecting it. It must be less. It less decentralized as a as a shorter chain, it has no more utility, and its ability to catch up. So, so it can't. Yeah. So it get, the network effect of the main chain gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And yes, you could you create short term a bunch of profits. And if you were the holder of this new coin, by convincing a whole bunch of other pe- people who didn't know the innovation here, um, to to go into your thing before it went to zero. But it goes to zero. Hmm. So, so that's one alternative. And 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 then because of because of the because you can only choose two of three sides of, of a blockchain. I, ironically, Vitalik came up with the blockchain trilemma to convince people about Ethereum when he himself missed what it actually meant. Crazy irony, and so the blockchain trilemma says you can only solve two sides of a, a, a blockchain. So there, so de- decentralized Bitcoin solved decentralization and security forever, first time, first time in history. And and so to be able to compete on it, we just should. You couldn't compete for a long time, but just 
building a new Bitcoin. Oh, you're basically saying pick two. Pick two. Hmm. Pick two. So Ethereum picked so let, uh, let's scalability. Go, yeah, so let's go through the two. So so Bitcoin, five to seven seconds transaction on the on on base level. So everybody that talked about Bitcoin, old tech, in uh, it was they they couldn't they couldn't be more dis, uh, secure and decentralized. So they had to sacrifice something else. So let's say Solana, and you sacrifice security, right? A blockchain that is insecure inherently has to fail. Yes. Okay, so that should be pretty easy to most people. Mm. I, I'm surprised it's not because there's a whole bunch of blockchains that are completely insecure that people gamble on, mm. but they all go to zero. But you could see if people thought this was if people thought this wasn't an innovation as sound as this is, and they thought it was just a money making scheme, then a whole bunch of, of bad actors from this system would race in to make a bunch more money. And and so so it has to be by design, has to be insecure. Or I choose scalability and I sacrifice decentralization. And that's Ethereum. And that's uh, and that's a number of others, and so you have you just by very nature. I can't believe people can't see this. So they talk about DeFi on a centralized blockchain. Well, <laughs> I've been having a discussion with people this morning because um, I mean, when you arrived, I put out a tweet two uh, two years and two months ago, where I said I trust BlockFi more than. Uh, smart contracts uh that's an unfortunate tweet because i it managed to piss off everyone because if you're a bitcoiner you're pissed off because you, you don't want to use a centralized service not your keys not yeah. your bitcoin and it pissed off uh crypto people because they believe in DeFi. yeah so but but let's use the, that crypto yeah. uh, uh, group for a second they're actually saying like ethereum is proven completely centralized now Mm -hmm. um, and so these others. So you have a high cost function. It's a blockchain. Why would you use a centralized blockchain? Why would what economic rationale would you ever use a blockchain for? Because you think it's going to make you more money. It's the only economic it's the rationale. Only reason. There's nobody thinking at a level of like the levels you were talking about here. Nobody is thinking about the best money for the world to. Rebuild the foundations of money to remove theft from the system, to improve coordination, to remove the warping. Of, like all these things you've talked about for years, nobody is thinking on that level with Ethereum. Yeah, but e but even even They're thinking so, of TPS. Yeah, but, but e e yeah, even see even so, I'm just saying the economic rationale to use that over the long term. People say Web three. They don't know what Web three means. They don't know. Uh, they 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 say DeFi on top top of this. They say NFTs on top of this. And here's this. Here's the problem. A database is a way more efficient structure. Yes. For centralization, Amazon isn't going to move all their stuff on top of an expensive structure um, called Ethereum to build a Web three. And neither is Google. Neither no. is it. It's it's ludicrous because somebody has to pay the more expense. And they have to charge the more expense of the more expensive blockchain. So what you what you understand is decentralization or Web three on top of something that's more expensive and centralized. It's theft. It it but it, it's, it's theft. It, it all, all go to zero. It's all built it, on theft. It, it all, all go to zero. I know it's there, built on extraction. Exactly, it's built on extraction, and it's built on extraction because it's the same model as as we have in the fiat system. Mm. It's exactly the same model that the rich get richer and richer inside that system, and they have to centralize more and more. And as they centralize more and more, they have to cut off certain things from other people. You have to protect the core. To, to to and you sacrifice the periphery. So that centralization always produces inferior results over the long term. But in the short term, people think, oh wow, this is growing, and they don't actually understand a network effect. The definition of a network effect is is every additional user makes it better for all users. And and Ethereum fails that. Because every additional user makes it, makes it weaker yeah. for all users. Because it becomes more centralized. Makes, makes it more centralized. And over time, and that's what ends up happening actually with the US dollar, or with uh, which it experiences really strong network effects for a while, or it happens with any with Google, which experiences really strong network effects, or Facebook. As they centralize, 
they have to choose they have to choose who who gets to have voice who doesn't have voice and by and by removing voices as they centralize more and more their network effect breaks down hmm. and you have something built on 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 bitcoin that because it's decentralized and secure the network effect can go on infinity every new user makes the network stronger for all new users with the blockchain trilemma yeah. how do you layer in additional layers into this because if you were to say for ethereum um, I say it's certainly gone for scalability, and I can't actually pick what is it sacrifice for that decentralization and security. I would almost argue both. So, so more decentralized, it's, it it would be fairly secure. Now it, it gets co-opted by the state because of uh, because because of that centralization and yeah. and, and um, because it, it 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 is not has a decrease in security. I don't know but, if it's even achieved scalability. I mean, so so what you, what we, what you would do is is, is you, you said smart contracts, but that's what sorry that's what they set out to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sorry, but you said smart contracts, and it's a really good example. By building smart contracts into the base layer, you you have to expand the amount of, the of space, of, yeah. and the amount of space that you have to expand means as the network expands, the only nodes that can verify the network are. It have to run so high supercompute that you couldn't actually have small nodes run the network. So you have to centralize with the the most mm. important nodes, and that's why those those design choices around allowing more in the first layer force centralization. But say with Bitcoin, it's suddenly decentralized. Directionally, it's uh, the most decentralized yeah. uh, blockchain. And it's more centralized, more decentralized today than it was last year. Yes. And, and every year, more decentralized, more secure. Yes, it becomes more secure. Um, so, But there's the argument it becomes less scalable on the base chain. It is. That is true. But so how do you layer, is this only a blockchain? And because um, uh, the second layer of the Lightning Network isn't really a blockchain, it's, it's a... It's uh, something built on on top of the blockchain. It's it's not part of the blockchain so this trilemma. Is, this is so important. This is so important. So for any blockchain to be successful, it has to really focus on decentralization and security. It has to solve scalability at a high level. When, but, but could sorry, where I'm going with this is, could it have gone for something else and solved decentralization at a high level? Could it have gone for scalability and decentralization and solved security at a high level? Or does it have to solve decentralization and security at the base chain? At the base chain. If you want to change money and you want to, if you, it has to solve decentralization security, otherwise okay. everything relies on institutions that you trust okay. that get co opted by money. It has to. That's why it's such a different, that's why it's so unique in time in history. Because every single other, when we read history books, when we read about um, when money dies, when we read all of these, they're flawed and because we never had a system that was decentralized and secure at the base. We always relied on a system that we trusted who was in power and they abused the trust. Mm. First time in history. And, and, and so if that is true, and you, it, people should do their own work with it, it's true, but it, um, it can't be broken. Uh, it cannot be broken. Mm. Um, and I've, I explore deeper why it can't be broken uh, in, in that article. Now, now it looks like instead of what people are comparing it as, they're comparing it as an asset or something like that, or a monetary, a monetary premium, and they're comparing it to gold um, and other things. And it, I, I think it suffices that test. It's a better form of gold. Um, but... But now what's happened on top of that through layered, like the, like the internet is built in layers, you don't know what TCP IP is. Mm -hmm. Like you know, nobody thinks about when they're sending their email that the base layer of TCP IP was invented in the late 60s by DARPA. And if the base layer failed, everything fails. We still use that, that, that system today. And the base layer has to be hardened. It has to be attacked. It has to be all of these things. And so the base layer of Bitcoin is hardening over time. And all of these attacks have crystallized. It's uncompromising. The uncompromising ability on Bitcoin is the strength. It's the, it, it, so, so when people talk about Bitcoin Maxi, it's being uncompromised on five to seven transactions. We will not let block size expand. <laughs> 
because it ruins the decentralization security. And and to try to change that, it's it's impossible because there's a swarm of all these nodes that would never accept a change that it would would allow uh, would allow that to happen. And for a long time, it, that be, creates an attack vector for all of these other cryptos to say it's old tech. Because but why they, do you think they don't get it? Or they think they're choosing not to get it? Do you think uh, because you can make a lot of money by deceiving people that your your thing is new tech? Okay, so the creators of the tech, but maybe the investors or the buyers of the tech. Like, I mean, I've, I've seen it today. I see it every day. You, you're just a maxi. You're close-minded. You're like, do you think some people just don't care enough about? They don't spend enough time studying money. Oh, but but again, who wants to every day? Like it's so, true. so who wants to think about that every single day? You're, you're like, I'm maybe a little bit crazy. <laughs> like, but, the, but really, no, you're right. But, but who wants to actually think? There are very few people that want to go down to the sand on both different systems, and then and remember, our measurement of a system comes from the system. So when you say, when when you say it's a theory of the new system, hmm. well, all growth comes from intuiting what behavior will look like on something new and there's yeah. no way to measure that you're predicting it and you're predicting under different circumstances and different different incentives what will change that's what all new businesses do when competing against existing businesses and i see this all the time in the businesses that i built that created a whole bunch of wealth against an existing system when you first go to people and you tell them your idea they tell you, well, give me the measurement of why your thing will work because I'm measuring Kodak sales, hmm. right? And, and you, have to, you have to predict what people's behavioral change will be on a new system.